Hello Perceptive viewers, this week on Vegetarianism, The Noble Way of Living, we will introduce to you two herbivore animals unique to Australia, the Gilbert's Potteroo and the Hairy Nosed Wombat. In 1863 it was recorded that there were immense numbers of Gilbert's Potteroos, but within a number of years they just seemed to vanish. It was Dr Elizabeth Sinclair who rediscovered them. She came upon an unidentified mammal in dense bush at Two Peoples Bay on the southern shores of Western Australia. Upon closer study at a research station, they proved to be Gilbert's potteroos, last officially recorded in 1879. Finding an animal thought to be extinct for over a hundred years was, of course, the discovery of a lifetime for Dr Sinclair. but there were only 40 of them in the Two People Bay area. Nor were any other sightings of them reported anywhere else in Australia or anywhere else in the world. Gilbert's Potteroo had changed from having immense numbers to being the rarest mammal on Earth. Gilbert's is not the only Potteroo in Australia. There are other species. The long-footed Potteroo is listed as endangered. There are about 60 of these little charmers in a forested area of East Gippsland in the state of Victoria. This area is now protected from logging and road building. Like many mammals, potteroos have an interesting way of bearing young. It is called embryonic diapause. After courtship and giving birth for the first time, the female potteroo will be courted again around the time of this birth. The embryos produced at this time are held in a state of dormancy while they are still only a hollow ball of cells. This dormancy is maintained as long as the newly born potteroo is nursing. When the young potteroo is old enough to stop nursing, the dormancy in the embryo stops and the hollow balls of cells start developing. It is the infant drinking his mother's milk that halts the development of the other embryos. As soon as this stops for any reason, another baby starts developing. These vegan sweethearts have a very specialised diet. Truffles, underground fungi, are often considered a real delicacy in the culinary world. So you could say that the potteroos are the epicureans of mammals because they live on about 60 species of Australian native truffles. These fascinating fungi can be soft or hard and range in size from a pea to a golf ball. When truffles are in season, Pock marked soil around the roots of trees and discarded shells of truffles are a good sign that potteroos have dined the area. Potteroos will use their cute little forepaws to turn the truffles around, just like a squirrel with an acorn, and use their teeth to crack open those with hard shells. Dr Andrew Claridge of the New South Wales National Parks and Wildlife Service is one of the few scientists studying the ecology of potteroos. He has discovered that their conservation is essential to future forest health and soil fertility. He says, They are the engineers, architects and hydrologists of the bush. They turn over the topsoil and improve its ability to hold water. That's no small contribution. They turn over an incredible volume of soil. They are also carbon recyclers, turning over organic matter to be incorporated into the soil. The root system of some eucalypts depend on the presence of truffles and their potteroos spread the spores of these underground fruiting fungi in their droppings. These trees won't grow without these fungi, so you can add the role of natural resource managers as well. The fungi transfer water and nutrients to the host trees and the trees transfer nutrients to the truffles. This transfer enables the trees to retain precious water from the soil because the fungi cover the roots like a sheath and form a protective barrier to prevent drying. It's a mutually beneficial arrangement. Potteroos have an ecological and economic role to play in preserving Australia's forest. Lose these animals and you lose the prosperity and health of our forest ecosystems. The potteroos, truffles and forest trees work together to greatly improve the function of the whole ecosystem. The truffles improve the forest growth and health and serve as a source of nutrition for the potteroo. These truffles in turn receive their nutrition from the trees and are dispersed by the potteroo. 
The truffles benefit from being eaten by the potteroos because the fungus spores pass through their digestive system unharmed. So the potteroos are important agents for dispersing the fungal spores. It's an arrangement that suits everyone. And it's an arrangement that needs to be protected for the good of all. Long live the potteroo. In order to protect these precious animals, the West Australian Department of Environment and Conservation has brought 10 potteroos to nearby Bald Island, where they would be safe. The potteroos have since begun to slowly multiply there. To increase the dwindling population of Gilbert's potteroos, a safe enclosure was built in Wei Chini Cup National Park, near the West Australian town of Albany. Nine potteroos were relocated there to live in safety. The nine has now become 50. The Gilbert's Potteroo Action Group is not-for-profit community group working to help save Gilbert's Potteroo from extinction. You can access the group on www.potteroo.org. You can also contact the West Australian Department of Environment and Conservation at www.dec.wa.gov.au with your offers to help. We'll hear more about Australia's unique animals when we return of this important message. See you in a moment on Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Vegetarianism, a noble way of living, and this week's vegetarian animals feature on two of Australia's amazing wildlife. Wombats are another marsupial indigenous to Australia. Like the darling little potteroo, the northern hairy-nosed wombat is also one of Earth's rarest mammals and the rarest of Australian marsupials. 100 years ago, they were quite common, but now are found only in one single three kilometre square area in Epping Forest National Park in the state of Queensland. As such, this cuddly critter with silky soft fur is critically endangered. In relation to the common wombat, which is also classified as vulnerable, some environmental scientists call the cute, hairy-nosed wombat the uncommon wombat. Like the potteroo, they are only about 100 northern hairy-nosed wombats left on Earth, and the Queensland Government is funding a major recovery program. Part of this program includes improving the quality and diversity of Australian native grasses available for them to eat. It is thought that climate change is leading to Australia's extended drought and has prevented successful breeding. The southern hairy-nosed wombat is also classified as vulnerable. These wombats are quite sociable and up to 10 of them live together in long tunnels they dig in the ground. They do, however, tend to separate the ladies' quarters from the gents. Hairy-nosed wombats look distinctively different from common wombats. Their ears are larger, longer and more pointed. Their heads are more angular and their broader noses. Their coats are much softer and silkier than the fluffy common wombats, who look like small bears. Hairy-nosed wombats range in colour from very light, almost white, to silvery grey, black or brown. They are on average one metre in length and weigh from 18 to 40 kilograms. The southern hairy-nosed wombat, although similar in appearance to the northern hairy-nosed wombat, is smaller in size, with a narrower muzzle and lighter patches around the eyes. The naturally vegan wombats feast on grasses, sedges, herbs, bark, moss, roots and even mushrooms. They have powerful front teeth endowed by nature that can gnaw these tough vegetations. Sometimes wombats will even eat farm vegetables. Their uniquely slow metabolism that sometimes takes two weeks for complete digestion, aids their survival in arid conditions. While we have to drink water daily to survive, a hairy-nosed wombat will rarely drink. He often receives enough moisture from dew and the plant food he eats. All wombats are nocturnal, meaning they spend most of their day hours sleeping and graze and dine at night. About the height of an average dog, the plant-powered wombats are so strong they are called the bulldozers of the bush. 
With great determination, these proficient diggers can dig or push their way past just about any obstacle in their path. They set up large complex burrows, up to 30 metres long, with several entrances and hallways to dwell in. The gestation period for a wombat is a mere three weeks, after which she will give birth to one baby. As marsupials, a female wombat will carry her baby in her pouch for six to seven months. She will continue nursing him until he is 15 months old. Uniquely, it is the girls who will leave the home, while the male children will stay where they are brought up. Wombats are smart. They actually have one of the largest brains out of marsupials. They know that sleeping and eating are the true joys of life, and they excel at these pastimes. In fact, wombats are absolute experts in the art of sleeping, probably because they practice so much. Wombats may sleep and snore away up to 16 hours a day. A wombat will sleep on his back, much like we humans do, but with his four feet sticking in the air. Another wombat sleeping position is curled up like a furry ball. They prefer this sleeping position when they need to conserve warmth. In the state of South Australia, Rescued southern hairy-nosed and common wombats spend their days cosily snoring and cuddling in bed at the Wombat Awareness Sanctuary in the Murray Lands. Founding director of the sanctuary, Bridget Stevens, is raising funds to purchase two pastoral properties in the Murray Lands to establish a conservation sanctuary for them, as well as a 24-hour free vet advice phone clinic. Perhaps her prayers were answered when a mystery US man touched in seeing her dedicated efforts in saving the wombats when he visited Australia a couple of years ago, decided to leave his US $8 million fortune to a foundation just last month. You can visit the wombats and learn more at www.wombatawareness.co. Thank you for watching Vegetarianism, a noble way of living. Stay tuned now because coming up next on Supreme Master Television is between Master and Disciples. Let us remind one another to tread lightly on earth to help preserve our incredible variety of beautiful animals. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash VEG.